Hi, for this video, what I wanted to do was take a second to show you how to create a scatter plot using Excel. Um, so what I have here is I have some data that represents the years since 1990. So like year two would represent 1992, year 10 would represent 2000. Um, and then I also have a column with tuition rates. Um, so what we're going to do for this is I'm just going to take and I'm going to select my data. Once I have selected it, there's a little icon um, down at the bottom, a quick analysis tool. I'm going to select that and I'm going to go to charts. And I don't like this scatter plot here because the scatter plot that it has tries to connect all the points. So I'm going to go to more and all charts. And you want to select the XY scatter and you want to make sure that it's the scatter plot that does it as an ordered pair. This one separates the two, which you don't want to do. Um, this is the one that we would want to select because it actually puts it as an ordered pair. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one and click OK. And what is it does is it nicely puts a, um, a starting point for a um, scatter plot. I don't particularly like the scale that they chose, nor do I like the type that they have. So I'm going to change the quick layout because I want to be able to label my axes. Um, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to find um, the one where it allows me to label my two axes. So I'm going to choose layout 10. And we can come in and put our axis title. Remember that this is our tuition. That way it's labeled with our values. And I'm also going to put the years since 1990. So I'm going to put those values in. Now I have labels. I still don't like this scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the vertical axis and I'm going to come up here where it says chart tools and I'm going to click format. Um, I want to format my selection from my values and over here it offers, um, it may come up under different things. You can change um, the different colors and all of that stuff. But what I want to do is I want to change it so that it fits the data better. Um, right now, it's kind of misleading because of the fact that it starts all the way at zero. So I'm going to start my minimum at 6,000. And I'm going to do, I'm going to just hit enter on there and then it changes it to a maximum of 10,000. So you can see a little bit easier the scale. Um, if you wanted to change, right now they have us counting by two down here. If you wanted to change the horizontal axis, uh, you could also do that and start counting by ones instead of um, by twos. And so it gives you a little bit clearer picture um, because the scale is set up better. Sometimes machines, they don't do the best thing. You as a person have to look at it and go, this is what I want. For this one, it's very hard to determine whether or not I should use um, a linear analysis or an exponential analysis. So with this, there are more tools. I'm not going to go into all those. But one thing that we can do is if we go back to design, and we go to add chart elements. You can add grid line or the um, go down to the trend line. You can add a linear line. You could also add exponential. And if you notice on this one, this one happens to be an exponential model. Um, it fits it better with the exponential because you can see that it goes through more of the points with the linear. You have a lot more dip in the middle. Um, so if I select the linear, what I want to show you is that these points right here, if I were to actually plot the residuals, it would show an obvious curve in my pattern right here. And you don't want that in a linear regression. You want these points here to be equally above and below your regression analysis. Um, so I'm going to control Z to undo that. So I'm just going to hit the control button and Z to get rid of my trend line. Um, and I'm going to go back and this time I want to select the exponential, and you can see that the exponential fits more of the points. Um, the scatter is both equally above and below, so it would give you a better residual. Um, so with this, when you are looking for whether exponential or linear is better in Excel, um, I will also do one that shows you how to do it with the TI-84 and also with the TI-Inspire so that you can see which one is a better model. For this one, I would choose exponential because there's equal scatter above and below all the points. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know.